Hello everyone and welcome to Who Wore It Better, the weekly segment in which I review Raw and SmackDown back to back and try and figure out which show won for the week. Survivor Series is done now, everyone's still talking about it, still pissed or still happy, maybe a little bit of both. Now we look forward to TLC. These pay-per-views every two weeks are going to kill me. Raw kicks off with Goldberg announcing he's going to be in the Royal Rumble match come January, which is pretty cool. I didn't expect him to go past the one match of the Survivor Series, but here we are. I think it's pretty exciting. I don't think he's going to win the thing. I think they're going to recreate the booking toward him and Brock Lesnar from WrestleMania 20, where Lesnar will cost Goldberg the match somehow. Someone's going to cost Goldberg the match. I don't think he's just going to be eliminated on his own, so something's going to happen there. I did wish we got to see something with Heyman and or Lesnar coming out and talking about their side of the story after what happened on Sunday. It would have been nice to see their perspective as well, but I think this is still kind of a strong way to start the show with Goldberg announcing he's going to be in the Rumble. I stand by my opinion that it was awesome. I just think the story was great because Lesnar comes in all cocky. He's the world beater. He's beaten everyone there is. He got overconfident. Goldberg caught him slipping. It was a very motivated Goldberg. You know, and in the world of wrestling, you know, no one ever really gets old. No one really ever gets slowed down. So Goldberg, I think, was protected very well. I think he did a very good job, uh, you know, looking very impressive against Lesnar. I think a lot of people got mad at me in my Survivor Series review when I said wrestling is fake. I didn't mean that as some kind of just kind of flippant thing. Oh, you know, you can excuse away any bad thing in wrestling you don't agree with because, hey, it's the show. That's not really what I was trying to get at. I didn't really articulate my point all that well. My, basically, that me saying wrestling is fake was kind of a response to people who found the outcome of Survivor Series unrealistic. Oh, how can Goldberg come back from this long and do this to Lesnar. It's like, you know, here's the thing. I think everyone is willing to accept a little bit of ridiculousness in their wrestling. It's all about different levels. For example, how many of you out there hated the Goldberg-Lesnar match but loved the Canadian Destroyer? Do you see what I mean? There's different things that people find, you know, cool about wrestling. Some things people find ridiculous and stupid. And, you know, it's like, it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's chocolate and vanilla. You know, you have different perspectives of what you like. You know, no one's going to come to an agreement on Goldberg-Lesnar. No one's going to come to an agreement on anything in wrestling. You could, you, you could tell Tell someone the sky is blue and you'd have a bunch of different opinions from wrestling fans on if that's true or not. No one will agree on anything in wrestling. So this is just one of those things people are going to argue about. Tag team title match, The New Day defending against Cesaro and Sheamus in a rematch from Hell in a Cell. I like this match. It was a really fun match to watch, uh, but I was kind of bummed by the ending. I think it's just like The New Day are obvious faces just in the way they interact and do everything, but like this very blatant heel finish to cheat to win to retain the titles like there's shades of gray i think what they did kind of crossed the line in that regard it made me wonder are the new day going to be turning heel perhaps like full-fledged heel turn before dropping the titles again if they do that they'd have to be like the only person only entity in history to win a championship turn heel face then heel again before <laughs> dropping the title people have turned heel or face in the middle of a title run once but never twice i think new day would be the first one to do that that's pretty interesting one thing that pissed me off one thing that's really irked me and this happens a lot on WWE, but like this particular incident caught me. Just like Sheamus and Cesaro, they lost the match due to wonky circumstances. The New Day cheated to win, and they just stand in the ring looking all pouty and pissy. And then you had the New Day just sitting there on the ramp, just gloating, happy that they won. Like, what's stopping Sheamus and Cesaro from just running out of the ring and chasing them and beating their ass for revenge? I mean, I think it would fit their characters, especially Sheamus, just because he's so, you know, alpha and so aggressive. And I think that would have worked fine. No one would have, you know, they wouldn't have looked very heelish doing that. I think it would have been justified. It's just one of those things where it's like, why don't you see people, you know, express that kind of anger and emotion? I'd like to see some more of that, actually. I enjoyed the sketch with Enzo, like, walking around, like, nigga. I thought it was funny. Just everything. The blurring was so funny. It's so obvious he's, like, wearing something underneath. But, like, I just thought that Lana's acting was kind of wooden. Like, her facial expressions, like, she didn't look shocked. She didn't look, like, turned on. It was just very, like, very neutral look. I think that kind of threw me off. But, like, I just thought Enzo's acting was great. I thought the stuff between him and Cass and uh, Rusev was great. And of course, leading to the match between Rusev and Enzo later in the night, in which Enzo got totally squashed. Where is the internet outrage for that one? And by the way, I'm being sarcastic, so please hold your venom in the comments section. In the highlight reel, they really went like full on in like teasing the Jericho Kevin Owens breakup. Like, I thought it was really going to happen at that point. And then all of a sudden, they were talking about who's to blame for Survivor Series. They both go, Roman Reigns. Oh, I was dying with that. And the part where Kevin Owens said, Who cares about the list? And the audience all audibly gasps. I thought that was just great stuff. Um, you know, but yeah, the segment was great. Uh, they swerved us all. You know, they're not broke up after all. Not yet, anyway. Anderson and Gallows versus the Golden Truth to find out who will face the New Day next week for the titles. Two tag title defenses in a row. 
that's pretty impressive by WWE standards. Uh, not much to say about the match. I did pop big for when Goldust did the twisting cross body block from the top rope. That's amazing at his age. DDP Yoga has made him ageless, like I said before. Uh, yeah, really cool thing. But Anderson and Gallows, they win the match. This is the best they've looked uh, these last few weeks, in my opinion. This is the best they've looked in months. You know, I was talking earlier on this series about how much they've been getting jobbed out and how weak they look. Uh, this is a good rebuilding process. Like I said, you know, they didn't, they, they got eliminated in the Survivor Series match, but they still look strong in that match. And then in the weeks preceding that, they actually look pretty strong winning in decisive fashion. So not sure if they're going to win next week against the New Day, but I mean, at least they're being built to look like a credible threat. Sami Zayn taking on Braun Strowman in what Stephanie and McFoley said was punishment for Sami for losing the match against the Miz's Survivor Series. But I question how this would be considered punishment when you remember last month, uh, Sami volunteered to fight Braun Strowman. But yeah, Sammy was just destroyed in this match. He was just run over by Strowman before the bell rang. He got the crap beat out of him the whole time. Uh, it was a really strong moment for Braun. Uh, the one thing I didn't like about it was Foley coming out and stopping the match. That, in theory, is not a bad thing, Foley coming out and pleading for the match to end. It was just how Foley was so half-hearted about it. He sounded like he just woke up from a nap telling you know Braun to stop and then telling the referee to ring the bell. I thought if he had a little more sense of urgency in his voice, it would have made it that much more compelling and strong, but instead, it just kind of ended on a weird note. They advertise that Charlotte's going to come out and explain her actions from Sunday night. She proceeds to come out and not explain her actions in the slightest, and then she's interrupted by Sasha Banks. Uh, she asks for a rematch for the women's title. They're going to get it next week on Raw. They're building Raw up to be pretty big next week. They have a women's title match and a tag title match, so that was pretty cool. And then, of course, Nia Jax comes out of the heels, triple team Sasha. Bailey comes out to make the save, this very awkward save where they toss Sasha out, and Bailey's just like, oh, and ugh, commercial. <laughs> then they have the tag team match, Nia Jax and Charlotte taking on Sasha and Bailey, kind of botchy at times. Nia kind of spamming the avalanche move uh, more, on more than one occasion. Uh, but the faces win when Sasha makes Charlotte tap out to this bank statement again. Honestly, if Sasha beats Charlotte for the title again next Monday, make it three Raw title matches in a row where Sasha wins, only to, like to lose it at the next pay-per-view, I'm just going to go nuts in a bad way. Main event time, Universal Championship match, Kevin Owens defending against Seth Rollins in a no DQ match. Uh, Roman Reigns and Chris Jericho are barred from ringside. It's important to note that. We'll get to that in a minute. But I say I loved this match. Pretty much 98% of this match I thought was great. Uh, I actually enjoyed it more than their Hell in a Cell match a few weeks back. I think their use of the tables and the chairs were really good. The, the crowd brawling I thought was great. Rollins doing the big dive from the stands. I thought that was amazing. I, I love it every time Rollins does that when he did it with the shield against Evolution. That was great stuff too. Uh, yeah, the match I thought was really fun and then the finish came and that kind of bugged me because you have Chris Jericho in what I, has to be a total rib. Him being in the Sin Cara mask attacking Seth Rollins costing him the match. Kevin Owens kicks Seth Rollins, power bombs him on the apron and beats him that way. You know, I get it's no DQ, but if they're going to institute this whole so-and-so is barred from ringside, like, that's blatantly violating the rule there. I just don't get the point of having that stipulation if there's not going to be some kind of immediate repercussion. I think if he's out there and Jericho's interfering, then I think Foley should have come out and said, we're going to restart this match. This is bullshit. <laughs> Jericho shouldn't be here. He's barred. Or, at the very least, Roman Reigns could come out and, you know, 11th level things out and then, you know, may end some kind of schmoz thing. I don't know. But I think the fact that Jericho came out there and cost Rollins the match which the rules uh, were supposed to prevent from happening, I think that was very weird, and it makes the authority figures look dumb, and that's going to be a theme throughout both shows. Moving on to SmackDown, now I'll save my talk about AJ Styles and James Ellsworth and Dean Ambrose for the end of this portion, but for right now I'll talk about the Kalisto-Corbin feud that's been going on. With the exception of how the uh, Kalisto-Kendrick match at Survivor Series ended, I have liked, I have enjoyed how this feud has been playing out. Corbin being the bully early on, attacking Kalisto for no reason, no provocation, then and Kalisto gets his revenge for a little bit, Corbin gets his heat back, and it's back and forth, and it's likely going to end in some kind of chairs match probably at TLC, if, if the thing that happened at the end of the corbin Kane match on Tuesday is any indication. But even though there's no, like, genesis for this feud, there's no real reason that these two should be fighting, other than the fact that Corbin was being a prick, I think that this is actually kind of one of my favorite feuds right now going on on SmackDown, as it's actually been built.
building. You know, we're seeing uh, history with these two guys, so it's going to build us something big, hopefully, at the next pay-per-view. The tag team turmoil match to determine the number one contenders for the tag titles in SmackDown. This was a really confusing thing. Like, the pacing was so weird because they had the hype bros and you had the Ascension starting out. And that was kind of an okay, like, you know, couple minutes, couple, three minutes going on. Then it was like, boom, 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 all these teams going through. It was like slobber knocker mode in the old SmackDown games when you could beat a guy really easy in this gauntlet thing. And then it was American Alpha and the Usos. And then just, it was like you're watching a totally different match. Like, that whole thing with the gauntlets ended and think now we're having these two guys, these two teams fight. American Alpha wins, which is cool, but then there's this really confusing ending where the Wyatts interrupt, they don't even ring the bell. The Wyatts just interrupt and they say, oh, we're gonna fight you next week. And then that was it. I think it would have been so much more impactful if they said, hey, we're the last team in the tag team turmoil. Booyah, surprise. They come out and they beat American Alpha in surprising fashion. And then they challenge Slater and Rhino for the tag titles, but instead they're pushing it to next week. So is that match gonna be for the number one contendership or is this gonna be something totally separate and then just kind of this weird awkward moment because the announcers going Bleh, it's crazy here tonight and like that just kind of killed it for me time now for the whole stuff they bookended with styles and ambrose and ellsworth honestly folks i'm kind of tapping on james ellsworth i think i'm over him like i think him the fact that he got signed is amazing that's awesome like awesome for him but at the same time it's like he's just been so just like they've been pounding him into your head uh in the main event stuff and i think this is not the right place for him i think they should have had it for a little bit after he got destroyed by braun Strowman, maybe back off a little bit but no he's he beat aj styles again kudos to aj for selling the way he did the toss over the top rope and getting caught in the ropes and everything that was cool but like at the same time though i'm just sick of seeing the wwe champion get beat at the hands of this, uh, they keep talking about how much of a freak he is, this weirdo, like they keep getting beat by him. And people are always asking me, Brian, isn't this like the Eugene storyline? Like, I can see why people are saying that, but they're very different things. One, when Eugene was fighting Triple H, Triple H was not the champion. Two, Eugene was a pawn in Triple H's game, and, and then Eugene had his revenge on Triple H like once. And meanwhile, I think if anything, uh, Ellsworth is a pawn in Dean Ambrose's game because Ambrose is trying to meddle in AJ Styles' stuff. Styles is the innocent victim in all this. And all again, Styles is the champion, Triple H was not. And third, and this is another big important thing, uh, the way they've been booking James Ellsworth, it's like he can't wrestle. He's only do, he only does two moves, you know, the, the, the no chin music and some punches, I guess, because he got the two hands. But like Eugene was booked as a competent wrestler. Once he got in the ring, he could actually wrestle and he could fight. You know, like he was a very innocent mindset, but like James Ellsworth, he's got the dopey mindset and he can't wrestle. Like that's not good <laughs> when he's beaten, when he's 3-0 and against AJ Styles. It's not a good look. So people make that comparison to Eugene, but I say no. It's not at all like the Eugene thing. I can see there's some similarities there, but when it comes right down to it, the most important stuff in the robberies, no. I think that Eugene was a far better story than what they're doing with James Ellsworth. And going back to my point earlier on Raw about the authority figures looking kind of toothless when it comes to the enforcement of their rules, they kept telling Dean Ambrose to leave. He was done for the night, but he kept coming back and with, with pizza and dressed as the Mountie, and then he was a hockey player, and he interfered in the main event, and you know screwed AJ Styles over. And this is a guy who inexplicably didn't get punished for what he did at Survivor Series uh, with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins against AJ Styles. Like, how do you not get punished? Like, I think AJ Styles Styles is like the most justified correct heel right now and it's like he's looking like a chump uh, with Dean Ambrose who seems to be skating by unpunished he's not listening to Shane McMahon when he's being asked to leave he's not getting punished for almost screwing the team over at Survivor Series I don't get it like what's the point of these authority figures throwing down these edicts when they're not being enforced and it just makes them look all dumb all smacked down and raw it's bad for both teams Time now for me to make my decision on who wore it better this week, Raw or SmackDown. You know, neither show really wowed me this week. I think it was the come down from Survivor Series. I was so impressed with that show. Neither of these shows really could match that excitement level for me. Uh, but really, I had to make a choice. And I think ultimately, I think Raw was the better show this week. It's breaking the streak. SmackDown's been winning a lot these last few weeks. But I say Raw was a better show. Like I said, on SmackDown, I'm enjoying what they're doing with Kalisto and Baron Corbin. I like where that feud is going. I enjoy what they're doing with Becky Lynch and 
Alexa Bliss, but there were other decisions being made on this show that really just irked me. I mean, like I said, the pacing, the overall storytelling in the Tag Team Turmoil match was just so bizarre for me. The pacing of it, like the slow, super fast and super slow, followed by this confusing non-ending slash ending with the Wyatts, that really bugged me. Then the main event, again, I think I'm picking Raw this week almost out of protest because I'm so sick of seeing James Ellsworth on my TV at this point. Meanwhile, Raw, you had Goldberg start the show with a big Royal Rumble announcement. I loved the main event, save the finish, and I also enjoyed the overall match quality on Raw more than SmackDown. I liked the Cruiserweight stuff. I liked Anderson and Gallows winning. I thought that the stuff on the highlight reel of Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens was fabulous. I thought it was just overall a stronger show than SmackDown. Even though SmackDown did some good stuff, and they did a lot of build to TLC, made a lot of matches for TLC. I am excited about Miz Ziggler in the ladder match, but I think overall, Raw broke the streak on who wore it better, and Raw won for the week. Let me know what you thought about Raw and SmackDown in the comments section below, and don't forget to vote in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.